What's going on guys? Welcome back to another MD Fish Tanks build video. I'm MD and behind me, it's so hard to do that right, is my Discus Aquarium. Now I set this up about six months ago. It looked really, really good for, you know, the first few months and then things started to go downhill rapidly. Now, I am not talking in terms of fish health. The fish health has always been immense. They look great. They're probably the most beautiful fish I've ever seen in my life. Look at you, just look at you. I'm talking about the scape. I'll show you what it was before and then how it turned over the next coming months. I mean, it wasn't as bad as this, but recently I ripped out all the plants that are in good health. They are down in this bucket, which we are gonna reuse in this tank, hopefully. Not all of them, maybe all of them, probably all of them. <laughs> yeah, so the problem we had is I created two little sort of hills out of the rocks there and the rocks there put the uh, sticks all in amongst them and then just a thin dusting of sand. This meant that all the waste collects in all the gaps and just sits there, creates cyanobacteria, dead spots, the lot. It's okay usually if you've got a deep substrate because it will work its way in and it'll be plant food, etc. but we haven't got that in this case because I didn't do that stupidly. <laughs> if I was willing to move all of the hardscape, do tons of water changes and all that kind of thing, it wouldn't be a problem, but that's not the kind of fish keeping I like to do. I like big planted tanks that look after themselves. We can still do that even with these fish that eat and poop a lot. Okay, so that's the backstory, you get it. But first of all, we need to set up a temporary tank for these guys to go in whilst we build theirs. Oh, Ember, <laughs> would you mind terribly if we borrowed your tank just for a little while? I mean, it's a decent size, it's got some good plants in, and it should be temporary, trust me. I'll be doing you something awesome in this tank after we've done this for the discus. Please, is that okay, Ember? Yeah, he said, okay, it's definitely okay, brilliant. Down here, I've been keeping all of the plants, oh, all of the plants for the discus tank, they've just been sort of, they're just in like a little bit of water look, in their pots, and then I've got a light on the top. Yeah, so I'm gonna be using those now, so I can take those all out, fill it up for Ember to go in. Ooh. That took a while, and that's a lot of plants. There's my hand, by the way, for sense of scale. We've got so much in here. Like I say, I bought this all myself. I've been collecting them for a while. So I know a lot of you are gonna ask, how do you afford all this stuff? You, you guys are the reason I can afford all this stuff. Every time you watch a video, it contributes to all the running costs and buying new things and creating content. So thank you very much for that. You know, a like and a subscription wouldn't go amiss either. <laughs> no, I'm joking, do what you want, it doesn't matter. <laughs> So now I just need to clean this tank out and put it. I think here will be a really good spot. I mean, at the moment, it's just where I keep all my creation tech stuff for filming with. I can just move that elsewhere, whatever. Put the tank on this stand. Again, it's only temporary, isn't it? And then I've got Ember here, and then the bigger tank, which is, you know, that's, that's a three foot tank. That's a two foot tank. So that'll be fine for Ember just for a short while. And then the discus can go in there temporarily. We can hook their filters up to it as well. Because currently they're running on two filters. We've got one there and one in there. Excuse all the mess, you know, I just, it's a small space we've got in here. I try to hide stuff wherever I can. <laughs> There we go. Now, is this cheap little stand gonna hold the weight of this tank? We don't know, but hopefully, we, no, it will. Of course it will. I mean, look, all the weight is forced downwards. It's strong. Yeah, it's fine. Let's fill it up. <laughs> yeah. So I've currently taken out the filter. One of them that was here, we've got two either side. I've put it round here at the back of the tank. I now need to just transfer the pipe work and then we've got one of the uh, one of the filters is being used in this tank, so that'll keep the you know the beneficial bacteria going with ember in there, the goldfish <laughs> pooping all the time. And then the second one, this one down here, I'm gonna plug into this tank, so we've also got that running as well. And then that will give adequate filtration for the six discus in sort of a small area. Water changes will be done consistently as well. Right, 
like we're all running we're all clean we're all temperature the same but <laughs> the temperatures match is what i'm trying to say so it's time to put ember into this one then we can drain the tank out and put the discus across into ember's tank i think what i'm going to do actually on embers is just bring the plants into the center so that they can go around it if they want hide behind because they're going to be a massively sort of freaked out so yeah that'll just give them a nice place to hide behind whenever they want but to be honest as you've seen already my discus are pretty chill like i can go right up to them like this look pretty quickly and they don't get freaked out i mean i could even banging on the floor there they actually think that means food time no guys it's not food time you're about to be actually it might be wise to feed them and then transport them yeah i'll do that <laughs> yeah, like I say, Ember will be absolutely fine in here for the duration of this build. It's not going to be long at the end of the day, and it's pretty much what it's used to. Plenty of space as well, as you can see. There we go, donor tank working perfectly. So we've got built-in heaters, so the temperature here will be just right for the discus. I think a really good option now would be to take out all the hardscape, drain the water right down so I can move the discus. I don't want to run the risk of these guys getting spooked because I've never taken them out of this tank, remember? So it's been a long time since they've been handled and I'm worried if I try and do it now, like we're getting a big net, they're just gonna go nuts. So let's bring the water level down, take out the hardscape put it to the side. I'm not sure what I'm using yet. I might use some of it, I might not. I'm, again, I'm not sure, we'll decide that later. But for now, I just need to get them into the temporary home. Right, I've just realized something quite important. I forgot, on top of the tanklet, I have got a lid, like a plastic lid that does shut properly. But anyway, the new tank, obviously, well, not, not the new tank, but the temporary tank, hasn't got a lid. I'm gonna need to go and make something quick. <laughs> now, these fish have never tried to jump before, touch wood but I don't want to risk not having a lid. Now, first of all, these fish are worth a lot of money. I mean, they're, you know, like prize stenker discus. Look at the size of them. And it's not just that though. I've grown very fond of them and I, I, I want to keep them for, for as long as I can. So I don't want to take any chances of them actually jumping because of a weird random spook or something like that. Sometimes they can spook themselves and they'll dart across the tank or whatever, but I've never seen them jump, but that doesn't mean they can't. There are stories of that, you see. I'd love not to have a lid, but like I say, it's just not worth the risk. Okay, this is the stuff I used before. It's got like a cover on it, but it works absolutely perfect. Although saying that, I've just seen this piece here of Perspex, which is completely clear, quite thick, so it's heavy duty. I put that on the, you know, the, the current tank and cut up the old one. I think that'll look better. I'm going to do that. Right, we're back. That is the new sheet of Perspex or acrylic or whatever you want to call it. How many names has this stuff got? Um, that's the old one currently on there. So you can see it's got all these lines going across and it kind of blocks a lot of light really, doesn't it? Which is not what we need for the new planted tank. It's fine for all these epithytes and, and was working really well. And it's done its job, I must admit. It's done very, very well, but this is an upgrade. I mean, this sheet alone costs like 40 pound, which is, $60 something like that so it's, it's not cheap but I think it's worth the investment because once I peel off all that writing and stuff it's crystal clear and it fits absolutely perfect so it's 1.2 meters across and 600 mil back or 60 centimeters back which is exactly the same size as this four foot by two foot yeah so all I actually have to do is slide it on I'll eventually cut some little slots in the side just like I have done with this one so that the uh, inlet and outlet for the filters can go in and again we've got the same on that side I did cut these holes in it for hard Escape to come out the top of this style tank. Um, I'm not be, going to be doing that on the next one. I don't think that's necessary. And also, there are good feeding holes, but you can just feed in the holes at the side and it just goes around, blah, blah, blah. Oh. oh, yes, look at that. It fits absolutely perfect. It's a lot more rigid than the other one as well. And 
I think I'm going to put a light on top of it. I'm, I'm changing this light. I think we can do it better than that for the next sort of planted tank. This is just white. So I've got one coming that's the same as, um, ah, like this one down here. So I started using the blues, reds and the whites after a lot of people told me the reds are great for the plants and they are starting to grow nuts to be fair. The blues, they don't matter so much because the plants apparently don't use that part of the spectrum, just the algae does, but it's, you know, there's no algae in this tank so it's doing good. So yeah, I've basically got a much bigger version of this light to go on the top and to be honest, I might even just use both, keep that one up there and put the other one across. Who knows yet, we'll see once all the plants are in. But now I can cut up the old lid put it on top of that tank and then we're all covered. There we go, that works a treat. Now that's the good thing about just trying things and going with your gut. Part of me was thinking, well, you've already got a lid on the discus tank. This is like quite expensive, you know, 40 pounds, 60 dollars for just a bit of plastic. Do you really want to do that? And I thought, no, if it improves it just a little bit, it'll still be worth it. And it's going to improve it massively, in fact. It's more rigid, it's more see-through. And yeah, well, that's it, yeah. <laughs> As a massive bonus, it has now been hours since we put Ember into his new tank and it hasn't collapsed, so awesome. <laughs> right, we're actually ready to move the discus across to this tank, but the problem is the temperature isn't quite right. So we're still at, can you read that? I don't know if you can read that. We're still at like 25, 26 degrees centigrade. Uh, that's like 80, 78, something like that, I think. I don't, I don't know, Fahrenheit. Um, so I need to add some hot water to this and some dechlorinator just to bring it up to the right temperature. It'll only take a couple of sort of cupfuls, I think, of uh, hot water and that should do the job. Okay, we're all up to temperature. There's no need to add the chlorinator. It was basically like a couple of jugs. I mean, we're quite close to the top there actually with the water, but that's fine. Next job, I need to drain everything. Oh, well, that's gone dark. Next job, we need to drain all the water out of the tank. Well, not all the water, because this should be flapping around, but most of the water out of the tank, just enough for them to sort of sit in, take all of the decor out, and then I can actually just scoop them up and put them straight across in one quick movement. So it's like real less stress, real less stress, not a lot of stress. <laughs> Hopefully everything's gonna be good, fingers crossed. And there we go, they're all waiting patiently. There's all of our hardscape taken out. Look at the state of the water. I mean, it's no wonder I was getting cyanobacteria issues. I mean, when you stir up any tank, you're gonna get it dirty, but this thing was proper filthy. Um, these guys, I'm gonna transport them right now. It's not gonna look great on the video, but keeping the stress down on these guys is far more important. So there's just enough water look to, for them to be able to stay upright, and then I can just get a net in there neatly, scoop them out, one swift movement, lift them all the way across into the new tank for them. Temporary tank for them, not new, temporary. <laughs> There is water everywhere. One of them went absolutely mad. It got one of his sort of spines caught in the net. Um, I, think I, was, I think I did the best thing, which was just to relax, stay calm, let them stop wriggling, and then sort of unhook it. It worked a treat. On the rest of them putting in, what I'd done was I sort of pre-scooped the net as I put them in the water so they knew what direction to go, and that seemed to work really well. Again, I've got, not got massive experience or hardly any experience with moving big fish like this. The first time I did it, I moved them from their bags into that aquarium, and it went pretty much the same, but you know, I figured it out as I went along, but all good. Everything's in there. They're doing great by the looks of things. So yeah, look, they appear to be swimming around the back like I hoped they would, so they feel a bit safe there. Some will be a bit braver than others. You know, they've all got different personalities, just the same as people. I've put a load of gunk in the tank. That's all right. It'll get cleared in no time with these two filters on it. <laughs> it's massively over filtered now, technically, but that's okay. Just means that the water stay extra clean for these guys. They seem calm. They do seem calm, like breathing rates look nice and gentle. No one's going crazy, no one's flapping all over the place. All quite still, so I'm really happy with how that went, to be honest. Right, now we've got just a job of cleaning everything up. And yeah, we're ready to get going. <laughs> 
What am I talking about? I've still got a ton of Corys and Siamese algae eaters that I need to put over into that tank. How did I forget them? I've got some stunning Corys in there as well. The Sturby Corys, I don't know if you guys have ever seen them before. I'll do some close-ups once they're in that tank. They look stunning, got these orange little sort of fins to them and details, oh, really nice. Uh, come here, these guys are proving a lot harder to catch than I thought they would. Get them in the corner. They know the routes around the tank. There we go, I've got two. Right, it took a while, but I've got everything. I thought the Siamese algae eaters would be hard to catch, but you know what I did? I put the net up next to them and then just gently guided them in with my other hand and they just went straight in. <laughs> Easiest to catch of all. There's quite a few stirbys in there still. You know, we've still got really good population of what we put in originally, which is good, that's what you want to see. I think we might have lost one or two along the way, but you know, such is life. Anyway, let's put them into their new tank. Again, all the temperatures are still matching, so we're all good. Oh yes, look at that little hive of activity now. Is that the right word, hive? I think it is. Anyway, yeah, looking good. Whoa, the albinos are so bright, the camera can't really pick them up. Let me do something about it. <laughs> Sturbys, there we go. So as I was saying to you, they've got these little orange sort of edges to them. How nice are they? There's a load of waste in the tank now because I got scooped up when I fished, got all the fish. Bronze quarries look, looking stunning. I'll tell you what, something about a bare bottom that is gorgeous. Oh, there we go. Straight away, look, all the colours on the fish are looking fantastic. I guess that's because it's like perfectly matching water, temperature, all that stuff. So we're all good in that area. There's something about this tank that just looks really cool. But obviously the upgrade is going to be so, so much better. Bare bottoms really do, well, black tanks, bare bottoms, a little bit of green really does show off fish really well. Because obviously there's no distractions to, to the actual fish themselves, is there? And they just look so nice. Stir bites. I've got to get more of them, haven't I? I think I've got about six in here now. I, well, no, I bought six. What have I got? I've got... There's two over here, there's two over there, and is there any around the back? Maybe I've only got the four now. I did get six originally, but that was like quite a long time ago. Looks like we still got the three albino. Oh no, there's another stir by. So yeah, there's some around the back as well. I think we're good. I think we've still got all of the fish. I hope so, that'd be great. Definitely still got the albinos. We've got all the bronzes there. I just need to see another couple of stir by. One, two, three. There's another two over here, and there's got to be one on the back. I think we're all good. Awesome. It's now time to put our substrate system into the discus tank. Into the discus tank. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to go with something I've used on some other escapes that has worked so, so well recently. It's kind of nailing it. I'm going to do it again on a bigger scale. So what we want to do now is get our coarse base layer in. So just pour it all in. A nice thick layer of coarser gravel. It just stops the sand from compacting. It's a great place for beneficial bacteria. I haven't actually got any, so let's go get some. Right, there's so many different gravels to choose from, different gradings, but we want something like this, but it looks quite dirty, so... You know, that would be fine, I just can't be bothered to wash it. <laughs> Over here you can pay a little bit extra, which I think is always worth doing because this is going to be perfect. That's the right stuff we need, really. We don't want to be wasting hours washing when we can just put it straight in and we're good to go, do we? It's only like a tiny bit more expensive as well. Oh. Shall we go for three? I think three. Definitely two. Ah, uh, three. <laughs> so hard one-handed uh, really didn't need to carry two of these <sighs> oh now I'm out of breath right looking at the state of the inside of this bag I would suggest they do need some washing we've been lied to people look washed 100 mil quartzite grit <laughs> That's clearly dirty. Ugh. Well, okay, a quick rinse, that'll be fine, wouldn't it? Put it in a bucket, rinse it a bit, get it in. Oh yeah, washed my...
that was 1.5 grams in total. So come to the side that you can see the depth at the back, just a sprinkling in the foreground. So this uh, gravel that we put down here is basically the whole bacterial colonization and nutrient layer. So I leave it like that. And then the nutrients can just sit gently on the top, not too thick of a layer. I don't want to go crazy with it. And then we just cap it all with sand and gravel. So I've done this in quite a few projects recently and it's worked so, so well. One of them being this one down here, which is going fantastic. There's like no algae or anything. The plants are thriving, they're growing great. And also the ecosystem tank, of course, this was done exactly the same way, except for I stole some gravel from my driveway. I can't keep doing that. There won't be a driveway left. <laughs> so right behind these rocks here is just piles and piles of the stone. Uh, it goes right up anyway exactly the same except for the new tank obviously is not going to have all these big rocks in it i'm not going for that look because it's too much this is just for small fish look all the endless so they can go in and out of everything like a sort of jungly thingy So that's a sort of level of base nutrients. I just want to add in a few root tabs as well. Now, ordinarily I wouldn't, but there's going to be a lot of plants in here and I just want to make sure there's enough nutrients. At the same time, you don't want to go overboard. I've done that as well before and you just end up with big problems. So I'm one of those guys that likes to err on the side of caution when it comes to the nutrients. I'd rather do much less and then have to add stuff if we have to, because with things like root tabs, you can always add them in afterwards. You don't have to sort of do it straight away. You just put them in some tweezers and plant them into the soil, even when it's full of water, it's absolutely fine. So start low and build as you go. It's easy to add, it's really, really hard to take out. Because we've got to remember, of course, that these guys, they produce a lot of poop. And what does poop do? It provides food for the plants. If we stick a load of nutrients in the tank from the start, add the poop as well. We're gonna get tons of algae in no time. These guys are really settling in nicely in this tank, by the way. They're always at the front now. They're not hiding at all. It's actually really, really good to see. Okay, nutrient set. It's now time to cover up all of this with our gravel sand mix. I always like to do this. If you use just pure sand, it tends to compact and you can't do a thick layer of it. If you use gravel and sand, it, it doesn't compact as badly and you just, you just don't get as many cyanobacteria issues or problems. So I've got a load of bags to choose from. I've got, see here, like there's a coarse gravel and then there's a fine sand in this one. Um, and then I've got even more over in this section. This is all stuff that I've used before, but I like to keep um, little jibs and drabs, combine it all together. I think you just get a really good natural look when you just use a little bit of everything. Right, there we go. That's a really good base level we've got there. So let me come to the side, move all of this stuff, my cup of tea, coffee, and my lenses. So you can see there, we've got like an inch of thickness over everything, a little bit more in the back, just to sort of bring it up a level. So look, yeah, there you go. Not a huge amount because, you know, we don't need more than that. The plant's gonna be featuring so much that you just want a flat base to be able to plant into. And also it's really good now to be able to put our hardscape on as well, because it can, you know, you can get whatever angles you want and the sand should support it. Saying that though, if you have got fish going in there that dig the substrate, probably not a good idea because stuff can collapse. I mean, just be careful with it is what I'm saying. Next up, it's time to get this awesome hardscape in. So this is what we took out. It's going back in, but completely different. So last time I had everything in the center and everyone could go around it. This time I'm gonna put this, um, well, the hardscape mainly at the back and then the plants in the foreground as they come forward and they'll just get sort of, you know, less and less height to them so that the whole area is open for swim room. My fish are pretty hardy and you know, as you can see, they're not really scared of anything. <laughs> so yeah, with that said, we're gonna build everything up at the back. I have no idea what yet, but I work on it as I go along. It's gonna look a bit weird to start with with no plants in, but trust me, it will look good with plants.
Right, so the rock placement there, look, really, really simple. I'm just trying to get some natural sort of look to the, the rocks are falling in essentially at the sides. And then I want to use the wood behind it against the glass pretty much. So that then it's like creating a nice backdrop, like a 3D effect wall, something like that. But it's not going to be taking up barely any of the swim room. So if we come around to the side, you can see there's so much space for swimming. And also there's a huge amount of space all around here for all the planting as well, which, you know, that's going to be the main features in this tank is the plants. To start with, it won't be, but once they've grown in, which won't take long at all, to be honest. Okay, so that one coming forward is, not only is it creating interest, it's also gonna give somewhere for the fish to swim under, because they like to interact with the surroundings. It will give a darker shaded area as well over here, so they can feel safe in. And it doesn't, again, impact too much on the overall swim room, it's just one little thing. So we're all good in that sense. Interest for us, safety for the fish, or the illusion of safety, you know, so they're not completely out in the open all the time. I might stick something back in this corner as well, I just think, and then, then it all flows together and is connected. But, you know, we've got an awesome looking skate then, but loads and loads of swim room. Oh yeah, really pleased how that's turned out. These two here are actually connected. I'm gonna glue them there in that point where they touch will be cool. So it's like freeway joining or something i don't know <laughs> i love the way that this one lifts off the ground as well again doesn't take up too much space though but oh brilliant really sort of weird like i said it was gonna it's gonna look odd to start with about the plants but once the plants grow in they're gonna fill in all the sort of gaps everywhere and bring it all together nicely except for that back area there i want that to remain open i think that'll look no not open plain i want it i want to put the swords in the back there so it's just a wall of green in that area i think that'd be a really good place for them to possibly spawn as well oh it's gonna look so good right next up i've got to fill in all of these back areas because this is the problem i had before i left all this like open and that's where all the waste collected we don't want that again so i'm going to fill it out with the original gravel so underneath here look you see that stuff i'm going to put more of that all over the back section and fill in all the gaps There we go, look, that's all filled in and the whole way across and behind there. So on top of that, I'm just gonna put more of this stuff just for aesthetics really. And also that's a lot easier to plant into. You can plant into this coarse gravel and it, it will probably be okay, but you know, it's easier to have the sort of finer stuff gripping the plants at the base. There we go, all gaps filled in, looking really, really nice. Next up, detail stones all around, like the sort of stuff on its own and the edges of the rocks. It's the same as always with this, guys. Just take a massive handful, go near the rock and just let go. Don't try and sort of push it too much. You can, you can adjust afterwards, but to start with, just chuck it at the corners of everything. Let it fall where it wants to. Literally, I mean chuck it. Like that, look. Look at that. It's good, doesn't it? Then once you've done that a bit, like that, you can just do a little sprinkle, a sprinkle as well, just like that. Just giving it a little random flick. Be random, just chuck it in places where you think it might have fallen if it had washed down a river. Because at the end of the day, that is what we're trying to simulate. It's like a river sort of look. And to do that, stuff needs to be forcefully thrown. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> There we go, looking so, so good. There's just one more thing that I need to do or want to do, you don't need to do it, but what I wanna do is just use some of the lighter sand just in this foreground area, just to give it that sort of washed into the bank 
look i don't know <laughs> i mean it doesn't matter too much it's all going to get pushed around buried and you know mixed up even more once the corys go in there as well but to start with why not you know final presentation <laughs> There we go guys, I'm so so pleased with that. I feel like we're off to a really really good start. So with a couple of years experience now guys, I can say that one of the best things you can do when creating escape is, this is gonna be a bit controversial, but for me it's to not plan it. I find that it works so much better when I just take the pieces I've got. Have an over overall idea, obviously. Don't just start with no idea, have an idea, but don't, I don't think about the shape. Like some people really do think about the shape. I just find it's better to start, just start. Just get some stuff in there, move around. Just try and create a flow from one direction to another. If you start from A to B and get it going in that way, you can't really sort of go wrong. Especially for instance in this scape, so we're starting in two corners that cross over. Hang on, let me turn it. Yeah, so the two corners. So we've got like a there and like a there with the main focal point being somewhere around this area. So we'll make the planting behave in a way that does that. So it's hard to explain because I don't really know myself. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully it works out good and looks good. But then when it comes to like the finer detail, definitely be random with that. Um, well, kind of random. You do chuck it and do flick the stones, but do it in a way that you can imagine the water flowing. So like if the, the water's flowing diagonally across the tank, then flick your hands across the tank or flick it across the, the face of the rocks that you're sort of trying to use to, to place it. You saw what I was kind of doing, so hopefully you, you get that. <laughs> It looks weird at the moment. It will look cool when it's all joined in with all the plants. I deliberately left loads of gaps between sections so that plants will have places to fill in but not take up swim space for the discus because, you know, as we look down, loads of swim space. Right, first of all, I've got to select the plants I want to use for this build. I'm not sure where to start. Should I start at the back? Should I start at the front? Low? High? I'm going to start with a short plant. So I'm going to fill in all of these sort of areas that touch and make them the sort of sprouty areas for like plants and things i don't know what else to call it you know like for instance i deliberately left a gap there so we can put some good plants in that section left gaps there so those plants go there but obviously they'll be taller ones and then these ones won't be so as many of you know i've got planted tank plants only <laughs> no livestock it's just plants and some shrimp as well but yeah so whenever i get new plants i just chuck them in these tanks I say chuck, I, I still plant them because I'd want them to grow nice. <laughs> but yeah, I just put them in and then just leave them, forget about them for a good month or so. So I've been doing that to four sort of tanks out this section. Let me show you. Yeah, so I've been doing it in this section here with all these different plants. We've got loads and loads to choose from. These are all epiphyte. Well, they're not, I just plonked that one in recently. Um, down here, we've got some nice ones as well. This is mainly the tank I'm gonna be using if I'm honest because there's some great looking ones there. A nice sword in the corner. We've got Gloss Stigma, loads of stems. Yeah, it should look good. So yeah, I'm just gonna jump straight in and just get planting straight away. No time to waste, let's go. There we go, that's a really good start. Loving that, <laughs> it looks so good already. As soon as you add a little bit of green to a tank, it just looks so good, doesn't it? So what I wanna do next is just fill up the water a little bit, get some water in that whole section. It just means that I don't have to rush the next process, I can take my time with it and not worry about stuff drying out. So I was just gonna fill it up just a little bit and I thought, you know what? 
the foreground plants are in, I can add more, whatever, but I think it'll be better to add all the stems in when the water level's up much, much higher, I can see with their line. I just like putting stems in when the water level's up. That's a good amount of water, so this is taking a while, but we should be done soon. Right, that's enough of a water level. I don't need to go higher than that because otherwise it's just gonna be harder to get in and out. It's already quite deep to be honest. But what I wanna do now is just fit some temporary filters, like internal filters, just to keep that flow going around. Because obviously as I'm gonna be planting, dust is gonna be kicked up, all that sort of thing. So we just get that in there temporary and then it will stay nice and clear for the planting period section of time, something, bye. I think that's a bit of overkill. The flow on it is insane. It's such a powerful little internal filter that. I've used it before for my fast flowing uh, Infinity River tank that was like, went all the way around. It's so, so quick. If you look down here, even over here, it's blasting all the plants. I mean, it'll clear a tank up extremely quickly with how fast that flow is. Look at all those bubbles moving so quick, even at that distance. <laughs> <laughs> I can quite easily slow it down actually. I could just pack inside this section with a lot more filter floss and then that just reduces the amount of water coming through. So I'll probably have to do that in a bit. I'll let it like go super clear first. Right guys, I've just got to stop the build for two seconds. This is super exciting. Something awesome has happened. Even more babies now. Look at this, my epistogrammas that I made a tank for about two months ago. I haven't seen the female for a while and now I know why. Look at this guys. I don't know why I'm whispering. The fish can't hear me. So there's the female epistogramma. And obviously that is all of her babies. Oh, they're babies. Where's the male? Ah, there he is, right next to her. Okay, so I haven't seen her for ages. Look, just like with the, um, just like with the, why can't I remember you? Why can't, the cribs, the crebensis. Just like with the crebensis, whenever I come up close to the tank, the babies just stop, they drop down, they don't move at all. Oh my God, this is so cool. What's going on at the moment? Like. Babies everywhere. Right, I need to make sure I feed the tank. I'm gonna use um, just like a flake that I normally use, but I'm gonna break it all up so that we get loads of fine particles going everywhere as well. I mean, this is awesome. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see her for a while and I knew she kept coming in and out of this section. So everyone said I needed to make a cave. So that's what I kind of tried to do, but with the, um, with the plants, if you like. So that area there I knew was enclosed in from the background because the sand comes up high and then was open in that section where she sat. She's not sat, is she? Because she's a fish. <laughs> oh, so good. I've got three tanks now with breeding pairs in. Right, I definitely keep this all updated as we go, but oh, awesome news. Awesome. Oh, what's going on here then? So, is this usual? Aggression between the two? No, no aggression. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm jumping the gun. Right, that's clear enough for our purposes at the moment. So next job, I want to start getting some stems into this area. The stems are gonna go nuts. They're all gonna grow really well. I'm gonna to have to keep on top of the trim and replanting. But you know, this tank can also serve as, as a sort of a tank that can provide plants for future setups as well. That's what I'm thinking. I'm probably gonna to have to bring this light down a bit because once that lid's on as well and it's kind of steamed up, we're gonna reduce the lighting quite a lot. But I have got the second light to go on if I need it. I bought a second one. It's not the same as this. It's got blues and reds and stuff. We'll just see how it goes once it's all in. But yeah, stem time. I want to fill out this whole area first. And I think I want to do like a whole hill of stems at the back. And then this whole section is where I want to put all the Amazon swords. I think it'll be a really good breeding ground. <laughs> Right guys, now we're really getting somewhere. It's starting to come to life, isn't it? It was uh, adding those sort of reds, which will be much more red when the water's clear, it will just be like super punchy. There's so much more to go though. I think next would be a really good time to put in the Amazon swords. So those guys are probably not gonna be happy whilst I'm like digging in there, but it's gotta be done, isn't it? Okay guys, I'm gonna need you all just to remain perfectly calm. Let that condensation drip off. Come this side and pinch this little one. Oh, no, no, calm, calm, calm. 
There we go. Nice. That was perfectly executed. I've got a gorgeous sword there as well. One. All right, next up. Oh, there's a Cory in here as well. Oh, that one's rooting very well. Look at these roots all coming out of it. Doing great. I'm going to keep the weights on them, I think, because they do well with them. Number two. Number three. Number four. And number five. Maybe five's overkill. I don't know. It's a big tank, though, isn't it? Oh, guys, I'm so pleased. That is, that's exactly how I wanted it to be. Like I say, a plain area. It's not plain, but you know what I mean, like a solid color area there for just the swords. And then there's gonna be lots of detail and lots of different things everywhere else. And, oh yeah, cool. It's like, it's magical, isn't it? I love it, I, I really do. I'm so pleased it's turning out how I envisaged, envis, env I'm not saying that. Envisaged, that's it, that's the one. <laughs> And as you all know, every MD planted tank needs pearl weed. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna keep it all in control though, so it's just one tiny area there. And I'll also do it in the other corner because, you know, symmetry and things. But we must not let it get like the Asian fish aquarium, <laughs> which is ridiculous. <laughs> Everything is looking so, so good so far. So, so good so far. <laughs> Everything's looking great so far, but I want to add more sort of detail to the closer areas. And basically there's enough big plants, I think. Like they're going to grow crazy as it is. They're going to go everywhere. And as they do, we'll trim and replant again so that it fills out all the sort of areas. But I want to put in some smaller texture stuff. So for instance, up here in one of my plant storage tanks, I've got some S repens there. Look, look at how good that looks. Now that has taken like two months, possibly more to grow that, that height from there to there. So it's, again, it's something that gives us some really good punchy colors, but it's not gonna be growing so, so quick. And all you've got to do is just snip it again and replant. So just like a stem plant, it'll grow and continue to grow, and then it'll grow more from where you snip from. And then also moving down into this tank, sorry, let me step back. This is uh, just like a cool green neon tetra, wild look tank. I love a wild look, many of you realize that now. But yeah, look at this plant here. This is Hydrocotyl Japan, or Tripa, 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 I don't know how to say it. Oh, hello. Really nice quarries there, Venezuelan quarries. Venezuelan orange quarries, that one, yeah. And so, yeah, anyway, what was I saying? So that's the Hydrocotyl Japan, I've got some there, and there's some there as well. Really good little textures to it, isn't there? Um, and it goes really well with that grass as well, the um, dwarf hair grass, which I might also add, but to start with, I'm gonna get some of that in. I've got loads over here. In this storage tank, right there, you can see it at the back. So there's loads there to choose from. I won't use all of it because then it'll all be gone. God, that filter's making a hell of a lot of noise. I'm gonna fix that. So I think we're now looking really, really good. I think the next job should be to fill it right up. We can get our lid on then because I need to start thinking about where I'm gonna put the holes for the inlet and outlet for the filters. So apparently there was some concerns over the Perspex sort of doing this twisty, warping kind of thing apparently a way around that is that if you flip it like it i don't know every few weeks or so or when you do your water changes and to do that then i'm going to make sure that i cut the holes right in the center on each side for the inlet and outlet and that way every time i flip it it'll you know it'll be mirrored it'll be the same so just do that now quickly
So as you guys could see, I started cutting this with the Stanley blade and then remembered I had the uh, Dremel with some diamond discs there <laughs> and did it in seconds. So yeah, we've got a nice neat finish on each side. I could just peel it off and put it on now. So I just checked the temperature and it's almost exactly the same. The two tank sizes are half a degree and something like that. So we're all good. Also I added the chlorinator to the water and even chucked in some beneficial bacteria. Well, because why not? <laughs> and thank you very much, little temporary filters. You have done your job excellently, but you need to come out now because you are ugly. <laughs> Sorry, no, I didn't mean that. What, what am I feeling about? It's a filter. <laughs> Yeah, I would recommend doing that with a jug in the future and not spilling water all over your expensive gimbal. <laughs> Right guys, I'm taking your filter out. No funny business, please. I'm gonna take the lid off. Don't jump, don't do anything stupid. I'm just, beck, please, I'll give you a good feed as well. A good, especially you, look, I can see you. I can see you eyeing up the pipe. Why are you looking at the pipe? What are you doing, pal? Hey, hey, what am I doing? <laughs> So just in case anyone's wondering, you have to lift the pipework out of the water to be able to unplug it here and let the water in the hose drain off. If you don't take it out and you just unplug it there, then the water just keeps coming out. And how do I know this, you may ask? It's because I've got water everywhere before from doing it without pulling out the water first. Okay, that's one down, one to go. I'm telling you, this is a lot more hard work than it looks. I'm sweating. You don't need to know that, do you? <laughs> right, there we go, guys. Lid on, filters are both running. So I've aimed this one at the front and that one at the back. So we'll get that nice rotational flow. I might need to add in a power head at some point. I did have one before, but don't think I'm gonna to need to, not with the Corys and, I don't know, I just, we'll just see, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I do, maybe I don't, it won't hurt just to put one in if I need to. There's a nice little space for it in this section here that could just blow nicely across the front and just get some flow going, so that'll be good. But yeah, lid off obviously, and now I'm gonna put in the discus straight away, first of all. So a few people said that you should only move them by hand, not the nets, um, I just don't feel confident doing that. I think I'm going to cause less damage potentially by using the net than if I try and carry them and drop them. They're so strong, they flap everywhere. It's not like a little goldfish. They go absolutely nuts and I just don't have the experience with it. If I was like overhanging a big pool of water, fair enough, but I just think it's safer. Like use the big net I've got and I've got the method now a lot better. So just to scoop them in with it, it should go really smoothly. There we go, see that worked absolutely perfect. So the trick I made there was just to lift the back end as it goes in. Oh wow, look how stunning that bad boy looks in there. Well, I need to get the rest in. Success. Straight away stop being dark as well, look at that. And like I say guys, all the temperatures are matching. And the final one, she's an absolute beauty, or he. There we go, look at that, nice and easy. No harm caused, the fish look amazing! Oh my goodness, are you actually kidding me? Look how good they look. And straight away, the blues have gone properly blue. Look at that, they look stunning. They were dark, there's no stress. Everything looks so good. They pop so much in this tank as well. I'm loving it. So space-wise, let's come down the side to see how much swim room they've got. Absolutely tons. So it goes all the way back and they're going to come in amongst all of this as well. So they'll find their own little territories. Oh, so good. Love it. Absolutely love it. Look at that. Gorgeous. Right. Corey time. <laughs> Thank you. 
there we go look Corey's straight down onto the sand they seem to absolutely love it some people might be worried about the more coarser pieces there hurting their barbells or something but apparently this is actually very similar to the sands they'll experience in the amazon for instance and you know it's not it's rounded gravel isn't it so look we're all good hello you seem content <laughs> siamese algae eaters look they've just gone back there just staying still at the moment probably a bit spooked as well have to say that overall that seemed to be an ma hello <laughs> Oh yes, the Cory seem to be absolutely loving it straight away. They're everywhere. So look, there's some at the back. They're all exploring, looking good. The Siamese algae eaters straight away, tearing around looking for some algae. They won't be able to get any of the plants, but the wood will have loads that they can pick out just until, over the next few days you see, oh, hello, sorry guys. Over the next few days, um, the, the tank will start to get its sort of first signs of algae it's inevitable it will always happen in a new setup it will start to get some diatom algae which is like that brownie sort of gunky stuff the the siamese algae eaters will eat all of that hopefully anyway so as many of you who watch the channel will know my discus are not shy at all they're very social kind of fish which apparently is quite rare for discus but i guess it's because i'm always here i'm always close to them they know me so every time i go anywhere near the tank they want feeding so it doesn't matter where i go in the tank or when I go near the tank, they'll come over to me, see? It's actually really nice. There they are, look. They're all piled in the front, but they could go anywhere. So I've already just sat back for a while and watched while I'm sat down editing, which is over here. So I'll sit down over here like this, and I've been seeing them going in and out of that back section already. It's only when I come up to film that they all come forward. <laughs> just be normal. Just, like, just, just be normal fish. Stop performing for the camera, please. But look how good those blues look. Look at that. Is it turquoise? Sorry, turquoise. I, I should know the proper name, shouldn't I? <laughs> blue. They're blue. Blue and orange. And I always call this one pigeon. I think that's right. Hello, pigeon. <laughs> yeah, so glad I've changed everything up. The colours on the fish look so, so good. I couldn't be happier. The plants aren't massively popping at the moment, but that's, again, they're new. They need to grow in and mature, that kind of thing, thicken out, and that should start to look really good as well. <laughs> 